Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I'm going to be playing an absolute diabolical vehicle. This is the ELC Even 90. It is a tier 8 French premium light tank that is arguably the smallest tank in the game towards the, the high tiers with a staggering camo rating of, I'm packing about 53, maybe 54% camo with regular equipment on this tank. What the ELC even 90 is capable of doing with regards to controlling vision is just absolutely obscene inside World of Tanks. And I'm going to be saying, talking today about why I think this is the most toxic vehicle inside the game. Now, a lot of you might be immediately raising eyebrows thinking, oh, surely QB has got to be the BZ-176. And sure, the BZ-176 is a problem. I would undoubtedly nerf that vehicle. I'd probably actually move it up to tier 9 and then maybe buff the AP pen by about 50, maybe give it a few hit points, and that's it. And just leave it at tier 9 in that kind of state. And I think it could be a perfectly good tier 9 vehicle within that regard. And that might also be a workaround for wargaming with the whole, they can't nerf premium tanks. Well, if you buff it up to tier 9, then everybody gets a free tier 9 tank. And then you basically just rebalance it a little bit. Only improve the statistics, don't nerf the statistics. Effectively, all they've done is change the matchmaking. There could be a way for Wargaming to fix that vehicle. But the ELC even 90, it, it doesn't break the game by hitting for 800 alpha or having crazy armor like the BZ-176. It kind of breaks the game by just being so darn small that it could hide in any bush. If you think about it, on a map like this, the ELC even 90 could hide anywhere. This tiny bush, that tiny bush, that's a possibility. You could hide in some of the shrubs around here with 50% camo, over 50% camo, allowing you to be able to get to those positions as well undetected. And when you're in a matchup like this where tanks like the SU-100Y are probably only packing kind of like about 380 at most 400 meters when they're moving then when you have 50% camo then they're not going to see you until you're within 200 meters of the tank which is just absolutely absolute madness for a tank like this it's kind of like a manticore but a manticore level of camo dropped down in a smaller package so it can hide anywhere on the map and importantly when you drop down two tiers and you get into matchups like this suddenly having relatively low firepower on this vehicle doesn't seem to be so much of an issue. And when I say low firepower, yeah, this tank, it has probably the lowest damage per minute of any tier 8 plus vehicle. 1,216 with the setup that I have here, which is it's not going to destroy any vehicle quickly. But as we all know, damage per minute doesn't really matter if you get an autoloader if you can control the engagement. And so the ELC Even 90, with its 90 millimeter gun doing 220 damage a shot, and okay premium pen of 215, as long as you're kind of shooting tanks in the side, or you're shooting lightly armored vehicles, can control the engagement and deliver that 660 burst within five seconds. Nobody wants to take 660 damage in five seconds. So the tank can kind of work around what Wargaming tried to do with the vehicle to give it poor, dam uh, poor damage per minute and thus low firepower, or shall I say uh, low potential, and just use this autoloader to be able to deliver bursts. And because, as I said, you can control when you decide to fire, you are the master of effectively getting spotted inside World of Tanks. That means that it's not so much of a, a downside when you have to reload for a very substantial amount of time afterwards. The reload time on this vehicle is actually brutal. It's 30 seconds base, and for 660, that's not particularly good. Now, the reason why I think this tank is so toxic, uh, apart from the, the what I've mentioned, that it could literally be hiding anywhere, and to be able to see it, you'll either have, well, to be able to take it out, you're either going to have to blind fire the bush it's in, of which it could be any bush, or alternatively, you're going to have to proxy spot it because it has such crazy camo that when it's in a bush, you aren't seeing it until you're within about 50 meters of the proxy spotting distance. But the big problem about this vehicle, and a lot of you might not realize this, this is the most played tank on the entirety of the European server in the last 30 days. Madness, I know. 
the most played tank. It's not something like a, a Leopard, it's not something like a Borask, it's not something new that we got at Christmas. It's the Blumen ELC Even 90. And that is because Wargaming put a very low price tag on this vehicle of 5,800 gold. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it was the cheapest tier 8 premium. And when you include it in things like the trade-in event that we had recently, you could trade in another tier 8, get yourself kind of like 3,500, maybe 5,000 gold off the price tag and practically get it for free at that regard. So you could do a mission marathon, trade in the mission marathon vehicle and only have to pay like 1,000 gold to be able to get yourself this little cockroach of the tank. And a lot of players are clearly doing it. 764,000 battles contained ELC even 90s in the last 30 days on the European server. To put that into perspective, the brand new premium tank, the Nomad, has been played 572,000. So this is pretty much about 40% more popular than the third most popular tank. However, even though, as we know, when Wargaming see that tanks are getting too popular in the matchmaker, like the Progetto 65, they will nerf them. As this is a premium, they, they, they don't seem to be, they're, they're not ever going to nerf this vehicle, are they? So I can only see this problem increasing as Wargaming still seemingly put it for sale. I'm not sure if it's constantly available in the tech tree the whole time, or if it just seems to be relentlessly on sale from Wargaming. And so the ELC even 90, for me at least, is a huge problem. And it also means that for future updates where Wargaming add mechanics to the game, unless they prevent access to the ELC even 90, it's gonna be very hard to balance within that regard. Imagine if they added in a bond uh, exhaust, for example. I think it will probably happen. The bond exhaust will allow this thing to gain another percentage of camo where it starts to just get absolutely ridiculous. You'll probably be able to pack up to more like 55% camo while moving on this tank, if that is the case. Or if Wargaming decide to add in another layer of customization to your vehicles, such as with field mods or new kinds of equipment, they will always have to consider that there's a vehicle like the ELC Even 90 that is going to be able to make more use out of them than other tanks. And it becomes this kind of min-max problem inside the game where Wargaming are kind of crippled from adding in new mechanics as some tanks are going to just break the mechanics that they add in. And so that is the ELC Even 90 problem. Maybe it's just because I find it very frustrating that there's a tank that anybody could play and anybody, all they have to do is you could program a bot to play this vehicle where you could say, this is the bush that you go into on every single map, drive there, and then it just prevents anybody from making aggressive plays to, uh, to push across. And while I guess I'm in a bit of a conundrum really, because I don't like how fast World of Tanks is getting. Uh, I definitely would like the game to slow down and you could argue that this kind of a tank with its passive spotting inside bushes definitely slows the game down. But I don't think it, it slows the game down in, a, mm, in an enjoyable way because there's no real way to counter this vehicle unlike other lights purely because of its size. I made the joke uh, quite a few times on Twitch that the way that I would balance the ELC even 90 is that when it sits still for more than five seconds, it grows like 1% bigger every second. So if it sits in a bush for two minutes, it's going to be like the size of a bat chat. If it sits in a bush for four minutes, it's going to be the size of a mouse, you know? And then eventually, it'll be kind of like a, a slow enrage or a, uh, like a, a timer that forces you to have to, to play the ELC even 90 or at least move around a little bit to leave your bush to uh, allow the chance for everyone else in the game to uh, to progress the situation. So, with all of that said and done, uh, I'm playing the most toxic tank today, and you can see that we just can control the engagement so well. We're always in a position where we will be able to strike our opponents, ooh, not with the best gun handling there without first stabs, and I'm just hoping, hoping, hoping we can get our sick kill of the game into the back of the tiger. But oh gosh, that's a 1357 coming towards me and I'm keeping an eye on them. I'm trying to see if they're gonna turn left or if they're gonna turn right. And they're clearly gonna chase me up here. So unless they're bluffing me and then they're gonna go round, but if they do, they're gonna go into the line of fire of the Jacks and the Panther, I should be okay. So an IS-3 comes down a slope. He's very close to me. Is he gonna spot me? 
I mean, come on, boys and girls, that's 200 meters and the IS-3 doesn't see me. Still, like 204 meters, of course, when I fire now, my camo is going to break, but that doesn't matter. I am moving around, I'm not even in a bush, and the IS-3 can't see me at 200 meters. How are you meant to counter a vehicle like this? If you can't see it at 200 meters, of course, if you're an IS-3, probably with a bad crew and look like with a stock turret there, how are you meant to see this thing when it's in a bush? The answer is that you don't. You don't see when it's in a bush. And so the ELC even 90 dictates the combat. And that would be okay if you could see your sixth sense goes off and you know, ah, the ELC even 90 is there. I can go and 1v1 them. But this isn't a game of one versus one. This is a game of light tanks providing vision for their allies. And that's wonderful. It's definitely one of the best parts of the game. But when you have a tank like this, that could just hide anywhere. Like I could hide in this bush, literally. There's nothing they can do. And this was the tank, if you watched my, uh, my video from about a month or two ago, where I finally got the Raider Medal on Ensk by hiding in a tree that I knocked down. Hmm. Yes, I managed to cap the entirety of an encounter matchup with an ELC even 90 with a fallen tree. And it's not a big tree. It's more of like a branch. I hid in a branch on this map uh, on, on Blooming Ensk. Got within 60 meters of my opponents. It was just absolutely ludicrous and managed to cap out the entirety of it, which was quite a nice challenge. It took me 100,000 battles to be able to get. So I thoroughly recommend going and checking that video if you're interested. So a filthy result for a filthy tank. This was a Radley Walters medal for the eight kills that we picked up destroying half of the enemy team. And even though our damage per minute was atrocious, if the game goes on as long as this and you dictate the pace of the combat, we were still number one on damage. Although the ELC finds it very hard to have big damage games. Usually this tank is winning with its spotting. However, with this team, the spotting didn't really matter, but we were able to use the filthy camera rating on this vehicle to always get the ambush off on our opponents while, while scuttling away to be able to recover and find our next target. And because this is a premium tank, it doesn't matter if you spam gold, we still made 40,000 profit in this game. So the ELC Eva 90, this is the most played tank on the European server in the last 30 days. This is a problem that I only see is most likely going to increase in the game as the vehicle is available still for purchase for everyone just inside the tech tree with whatever gold they have. It's bizarre to me after Wargaming unnecessarily nerfed the Progetto 65 just because they made it too popular by putting it inside the top of the tree and also the battle pass at the same time that they keep selling this ELC for 90 for a fairly low price and now it's the most popular tank they're still selling it and I wonder if they realize just how game breaking it can be if an ELC even 90 that's set up correctly goes and sits in a single bush on pretty much most of the maps in the game. But I'd really like to know what you all have to say in the comments down below. Do you find the ELC even 90 is a problem in any way? Or do you think that they're perfectly innocent French light tanks just driving around doing their own thing? Let me know in the comments down below. And I really hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it's released on Monday, I'm going live all day with brand new Twitch drops starting at two o'clock UK time today. So come and get yourself some fat loot just for watching the stream. So really looking forward to seeing you all live right now. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.